Hey guys, welcome to another IGCC video. Um, we're taking a look at the human eye today. So that's uh, chapter 14.2. So take a, a quick look at the syllabus and we'll begin the video shortly. So here is a quick uh, diagram of the eye. And you, got, you are required to take a look at the diagram, label it, and also demonstrate the knowledge that you know what each of these structures actually do. So the back of the eye um, is the retina and the retina contains light receptors uh, which are called there's two types of receptors there's one called rods and the other called cones so the rods are responsible for uh, vision under low light conditions and the cones are responsible for you know, color vision and so basically light is focused on the retina and the impulses from that get transferred through the optic nerve and to the brain where we process the information and allow us to basically see. So the light makes its journey from the outside world here and the first point of contact it makes with the eye is the cornea which has uh, the, the function of refracting light which just basically means that it changes the direction of light which is important when we're thinking about focusing. Okay, so the light travels through here, gets hit, uh, hits the cornea, gets refracted um, and it enters through the pupil which is basically a hole. Um, and so what that does is the size allows control of how much light actually enters the eye. So the larger the pupil, the more light gets in. The smaller the pupil, the lower light, uh, the lower the amount of light that gets into the eye. And that's basically a defense mechanism because m too much light entering the eye can actually damage the uh, light sensitive cells in the retina. And so the pupil size is actually controlled by what we call the iris, which is the muscular structures here. And so as light passes through the pupil, it hits what we call the lens, which is the circular structure, which can actually uh, change shape uh, depending on its needs. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in, a, in, in the future slide. But so essentially what this also does is uh, refract um, and focus light onto the retina. So you've got the back part of the eye, as I said, is the retina, but actually you've got this little dip here, and that's called the fovea, and that's where majority of the light is focused. And um, here in the fovea, you actually have a really, really high concentration of cones um, compared to the rods, uh, but you'll see that generally, uh, when you take a look at the entire retina, you have a lot more rods than cones, but centered within the fovea, you have a really high concentration of those cones and that makes sense because color vision is very important to us and cones uh, are responsible for our color detection. So we take we we briefly talked about the function of the pupil and how it you know allows the it controls the amount of light that enters the eye. So how it actually happens is through the iris and if you take a look at the iris here so obviously the middle part the black part here is the pupil and the surrounding structures the iris uh, within the iris you've got two sets of muscles one are circular muscles which basically are like rings and you've got the radial muscles which sort of um, act like vertical strings that kind of uh, spread out okay and they've got two different functions so when the circular muscles, the red muscles, contract, it constricts the pupil, making it smaller. Um, and the radial muscles, the yellow muscles here, when that contracts, it actually dilates the pupil. So you can think of it as, you know, pulling on the pupil here, making it bigger when the yellow muscles contract. Um, and if, when the red muscles contract, it sort of contracts inwards to make the pupil smaller. So under really, really bright conditions, you want your pupil size to be small because, you know, allowing too much light into the eye can damage the eye. So... Under bright light conditions, you've got a small pupil, and how the you know muscles work is that the circular muscles contract to make the pupils as small as possible, and the radial muscles relax. Okay, and oppositely, under dim light conditions, you've got circular muscles that relax, and the radial muscles contract. So they're they're muscles that do opposite things, and when one contracts, uh, the other one relaxes, and so forth. So um, that we took a look at the pupils and how the pupil size is uh, varied via the iris. Now let's take a look at the circular structure here called the lens and I suggested earlier that the lens can actually change shape as well. So let's imagine we take um, a look at the first diagram here and we're taking a look at a plane that is traveling very uh, far away from us and so essentially when we take a look at the plane uh, what allows us to 
you know visualize the plane is that we basically interpret the light that is coming off the plane and as that light is focused towards the back of the eye uh, those impulses travel to our brain and our, pr our brain basically processes that information and you know, allow us to see what we call a plane so you know the light that is coming from the plane is very distant and because it's so distant uh, the rays are quite parallel and when the rays are parallel you know focusing those parallel rays do not require too much effort so you know you've got the lens looking like this okay so that's a distant object now let's imagine you're taking a look at something close up for example a book uh, the light rays that are coming out from an, a near object is actually divergent, meaning it's spreading out from the point at which it's coming from. Um, so what that means is because the uh, light rays are coming at a larger angle, to be able to focus it on the back of the eye, it requires uh, more uh, convergence, basically more um, effort to you know, sort of focus those rays at the back of the eye. Okay, so we'll take a look at that. So when we're taking a look at the plane, as we've discussed before, the lens shape is quite thin uh, because not much is needed to focus those rays at the back of the eye. When you are taking a look at something up close, like a book, you've got uh, the lens that becomes thicker because a thicker lens will refract the light more. Basically, it has more power to change the direction of those light rays and um, therefore the ability to focus those rays towards uh, at, at the back of the eyes. Now imagine if the lens shape didn't change and the lens was just as thin as the first example when you're looking at something up close and if, if it didn't change shape like it did then what will happen is there is not enough power to uh, basically refract the rays that are coming from the book and it gets focused somewhere we don't want it to get focused. We want it to get focused right at the back of the eye but here you've got you know an out of focus <coughs> ray and what that will do is give us blurry vision. So you know how it does that is something that you guys also need to know. So you've got the lens here and under normal circumstances so in a relaxed state okay so when you are looking at something very far away the lens is very relaxed um, and so what that means is well essentially it's not the lens that is relaxed it's the ciliary muscle so the ciliary muscle under normal con uh, conditions um, will be in such a shape that it's actually pulling on each side of the lens uh, by something that we call suspensory ligaments. So when the ciliary muscle is relaxed, on each end it is actually pulling on the lens to make the lens thin. So take a look at this diagram here. This is actually what it would look like under the most relaxed state. Okay, so the ciliary muscle is actually pulling on the uh, on each end of the lens and therefore making the lens thin. Now when you're taking a look at something up close, for example as I said the book here, uh, what happens is the ciliary muscle contracts and what that means is the ciliary muscle will actually get pulled inwards like so and therefore relieving the tension off the lens allowing the lens to bulge. Okay and it's, uh, it's sort of counterintuitive but um, as you, as long as you're aware that when the ciliary muscles are relaxed, it's actually um, that that's when there's the most tension on each side of the lens, and therefore pulling on the lens to make it thin. And when the ciliary muscle contracts, it doesn't contract outwards; it actually contracts inwards, and therefore relieving the lens um, from the tension, and therefore allowing it to just get bigger uh, because we're not stretching it up anymore. Okay, so you know, again, as I said, the bigger bigger the lens the more light that it will refract well the, the to to the large uh, to a larger degree um refraction will happen and therefore allow that pinpoint focus onto the retina so uh that's it for today guys um if you've got any further questions just you know ask in the comments below and um, i will try to answer it for you but otherwise um i'll see you in the next video